right, I will call to order the March 16th meeting. Since 6 p.m., the board has been in closed session to consider the following. Discussion of minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act for purposes of approval by the body of the minutes. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district or legal counsel for the district. Student disciplinary cases and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. I will entertain a motion to come out of closed session. A motion is second or heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey, we are in open session. Good evening and welcome to the March 16th board meeting. Our mission is to educate students to be self-directed learners, collaborative workers, complex thinkers, quality producers, and community contributors. Please call the roll, Mrs. Bell. Board members present this evening, Kristen Fitzgerald, Donna Wanke, Christine Gerke, Paul Leong, Joe Kosminski, Charles Cush, and Janet Yangroar. Hey. Do you join the Board of Education in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right. We have reached the point in our, in our agenda for good news. Uh, good news. Tomorrow, March 17th, uh, begins our e-learning classes and continuation of learning for students in Naperville 203. Uh, our teachers have been working very diligently to create remote learning plans with the outcome to continue learning uh, progressions for students as well as provide a little sense of normalcy and structure during this uncertain times. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, where, where our community can find information and how to stay apprised of uh, what's going on in District 203. Uh, during this statewide mandatory school closing period. But I think the good news really is uh, the commitment and dedication of our staff and the hard work that they've put in uh, really over the weekend uh, in preparation for our e-learning tomorrow. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment. I do not have any slips of paper for public comment. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the board? Okay. So we will move on to the monthly reports. Listed in board docs are our monthly reports, Treasury Investments, Insurance, and Budget. Does any member of the board have any questions about the monthly reports? Okay. So we will go on to action by consent. I was the individual passed with um, bills and claims this week, along with Joe, who met with um, Mike and uh, Melanie. So thank you for all of your help in ensuring that we were able to have all our questions answered. Um, so with that, I will move the approval of warrant number 1023574 through warrant number 1024297, totaling $19,864,282.72 for the period of February 19th, 2020 to March 16th, 2020. Second. A motion and a second are heard. Please call the roll. Husminski. Aye. Leong. Juan Key? Yes. Gerke? Yang Rohr? Fitzgerald? Aye. Cush? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. However, I did not mention the, the consent agenda. So I will have to entertain another motion for the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. The motion is second I heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Kosminski? Aye. Leong? Aye. Juan Key? Yes. Gerke? Yang Rohr? Fitzgerald? Aye. Cush? Aye. Okay, uh, we have no student ambassadors present, so our next item will be item 8.02, written communications. Listed in board docs are our Freedom of Information Act request for your viewing pleasure. So we will move on to item 8.03. Do you want to mention? Yep. So a couple of things. First of all, uh, regarding this evening's agenda, we're operating under guidance from the Illinois State Board of Education regarding our meetings right now uh, that we focus only on uh, items on the agenda that are time bound. Uh, or essentially, essential to be done, uh, such as hiring uh, and the paying of bills. Uh, so we have some items scheduled for conversation without action and some items later on in the agenda requiring action but are not of essential nature. So we will be moving through the uh, agenda. Board President Fitzgerald will kind of move the agenda along. So as you see us skipping through some things, uh, we are, again, focusing on those items that based off of the guidance from ISBE, uh, we, we must address this evening uh, during our meeting. Uh, again, to our community, I will tell you that, um, as you know, this is just a rapidly changing environment that we're working and living in right now. Uh, so we appreciate your patience and your understanding as we work through 
uh, on the guidance that we receive daily uh, from our local, our state, and our federal governments. Uh, I am extremely proud of the work of the people in this district to really respond to ever-changing uh, conditions and environments uh, from uh, what we've seen a drastic change in the recommendation from the CDC regarding the number of people uh, in, in gatherings uh, to uh, Right now, mandated events uh, of 50 or more people be canceled in the state of Illinois, and recommendations today by the federal government that we consider limiting uh, 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 groups to 10. Uh, so we'll continue to provide guidance and updates to our community on our website. I strongly encourage you to consult the website, as well as your school's websites, for information regarding our e-learning plans, our continuation of services of, of education, but also very importantly for members of our community, our continuation of services regarding food service. Uh, so you'll see information on our website about how to, um, how, how to be able to access those services. A huge thank you. Once again, we talk about the importance of uh, an exemplary school district being the result of a collaboration of among our students, staff, parents, and community. We've seen tremendous uh, outreach uh, from groups like the Naperville Education Foundation, even Edward Elmhurst Hospitals Foundation, on how they can work with us to support us uh, in, in ensuring that we continue to provide services to our kids. So your best source of information is our website and sign up for our Talk 203 messages so that you receive those messages and updates. Uh, we have been sending things daily. So today our, our families should have received a Talk 203 email uh, that outlines uh, our e-learning plans as well as the food service plans. Uh, the website will be updated and populated as new information comes in. Uh, again, I appreciate your patience. We are currently uh, operating under uh, my local decision regarding school closure in concert with the governor's decision to mandate school closures. Uh, and so uh, some of that overlaps into our spring break. Uh, we are tentatively scheduled to return to school at this point on April 6, 2020. Uh, but uh, we will ag again continue to take guidance from uh, our, our various branches of government. So, that's it. Hey. So on that note, the item 8.04, we will save for an additional evening. So we will go to item 8.05. I have a brief president's report, which is simply that the board met on March 10th, uh, 2020, for our annual self-evaluation. And we will discuss any next steps from our board self-evaluation at a current, at a further future meeting. Okay, moving on to item 8.06, the board of education reports. We'll skip that for now. Uh, we'll go on to discussion without action, and our discussion without actions, we will also go past because they do not need action this evening. So we will go first to discussion with action 10.01, debt service levy. Okay. Uh, in, in board docs, you'll see again a abatement resolution, the recommendation from the administration. Uh, this is something that we have proactively discussed uh, really for the past couple of years, and it's been a, a, a somewhat regular practice for us is to abate the debt service levy. So it's our recommendation that the board abate the 2019 debt service levy. Mr. Francis is here to be available to answer any questions if there are any questions from the board. Thank you for that ongoing commitment to um, lift the burden for our taxpayers. Are there any questions from the board? Do you have a presentation that you wish to give? No. Okay. So if there are no additional questions from the board, I'll entertain a motion with regard to the debt service levy, item 10.01. I move approval of item 10.01, abatement of the debt service levy as presented. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Leong? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cush? Aye. Gerke? Yang Roar? Wan Ki? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So we'll move on to item 10.01. Yep. With that action, uh, this next uh, resolution is necessary, so the administration respectfully recommends that the approval of the attached resolution posted in board docs, which approves the transferring of monies on the education fund to the debt service fund to provide funding in lieu of the 2019 debt service taxation. We be happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions on the transfer of funds for debt abatement? Donna. I don't have a question, but can we just remind the community what, um, for, I should have asked this in the last one, but um, the amount that uh, we are saving the taxpayers just in this. I mean, I know we've done it year after year, and we talked about that already previously, but just in this one, do you, do we have the amount that that that's, I mean, it's the amount that we're transferring. So the amount of, that we're transferring, yeah, we're abating a bit, $2.7 million. Okay. That that's the savings of $2.7 million to the taxpayers. That will be removed from the tax bill right. when the clerk uh, does its extensions in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I will entertain a motion for item 10.02, resolution, transfer of funds for debt abatement. I move to approve item 
10.02 resolution transfer of funds for debt abatement. A motion and a second are heard. All those in favor? Oh, call the roll. Sorry. Yang Roar? Kush? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Leong? Aye. Gurky? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. So we will move on to item 10.03 authorization to reduce 2019 aggregate extension. Okay. Uh, the Board of Education directed the administration to prepare some scenarios into consideration of uh, reducing the overall extension by a half million and by one million dollars. Uh, it is the recommendation of the administration to the Board of Education that you not take action to reduce the extension at this time. Our recommendation really comes in, in light of the, the current uh, ongoing unprecedented uh, times that we have as a result of the, the pandemic crisis and a lot of uncertainty that exists. Uh, we do. Uh, we will continue to look at other ways to pass on savings to the taxpayers. Uh, it, 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 Mr. Francis has presented previously to the Board of Education some options for that, uh, and so we would continue to pursue uh, looking at looking at uh, paying down some of our pension obligations uh, for IMRF that could result in savings to the taxpayers. But due due to the current uh, situation that we are facing globally, it's our recommendation that you not reduce it, which would then would require no action for you on this item. We'd be happy to address any questions that you have. Okay, and for those of you following along in board docs, the scenarios that were requested that include the scenarios for the five-year forecast with the extension of an abatement of 0.5 million or 1 million are in the previous week's board docs, those yeah. scenarios. Okay, questions from the board? Donna. So I asked for these scenarios, and I so appreciate all the work that we've put into doing these. Um, I think that uh, our our board is very diligent about trying to find that balance between uh, doing what's right for the school district and also uh, alleviating any kind of burden to the taxpayers. So um, I thank you for the, the scenarios. They help to make the decisions. And at this point, I would like to not to take action. I think that your comments with regard to the uncertainty of health care costs and other types of costs that we may incur, as well as looking towards the coming years, I mean, the coming budget years, and what kinds of um, benefits we may need to um, provide for students who might be behind. Um, if there are periods of time where we have, um, we're out of class, um, or, you know, any other needs that students may have from this period of time, health needs, et cetera. Um, I would I agree that the uncertainty is difficult and that the recommendation is you know my perspective as well so other comments from the board Christine I'm I'm also happy to go with the uh, administration's recommendation on this the uncertainty I mean you've done a great job Mike getting us any answering any question and trying to um, look into a crystal ball and see what else we might need to consider um, but the uncertainties are um, I can't even get to a point where I'm I can sometimes get to a point where I might not agree with the decision but I'm comfortable understanding why that decision is being made I can't get to a comfortable place to go beyond um, to, to, to consider any additional abatement at this point but thanks so much for your help along the way and I'd prefer not to consider, consider any additional Paul <laughs> Thanks for presenting all these projections. I would like to consider reducing the aggregate extension by $1 million. I understand my other board members' concerns, but that is my posture. Thank you. Janet. Thank you for the projections. Um, I, I, I agree with um, administration's recommendation to not uh, abate. Um, there are a lot of uncertainties, of course, but I, I know one of the um, certainties, one of the things that we do know is um, we've seen unprecedented Fed action, and we're at 0% interest rates, and we know what's going to happen to our investment income already. And just kind of hearing about, like, just understanding, you know, what's going to happen to to that facet of our, our um, revenue receipts that makes me um, want to just, just I, I believe the, the debt abatement is... Um, you know, already responsive to taxpayer um, needs and, and you know, their requests to alleviate those burdens. So I would be in the camp of uh, not uh, abating. Joe. Yeah, I would also agree with the uh, district's recommendation. Um, 
to uh, not abate at this time with the current volatility uh, with, uh, and everything. Um, and I, I do favor looking for other savings later on with the IMRF funds. Um, so I would be in support of uh, looking at that more, more uh, deeply uh, at future meetings. Charles. Yeah, um, what's interesting, I'm actually very torn on this one because um, you know, we talk about the uncertainty, and there's also uncertainty for the taxpayers as well. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, being able to return some in, some dollars back to back to them, um, especially given the uncertainty. Um, you know, many with uncertain incomes, and you know, those who are on fixed incomes or on hourly incomes, different things like that. So, um, I, I I am torn. I do I do um, agree with Janet's point around. Um, you know, understanding what's happening with investment income and things like that. And I do believe that uh, the action we just took to abate the uh, debt service levy and continue with that mm -hmm. uh, does provide, as Donna asked my question about the $2.7 million that that is returning to the community. So um, I, um, I will say that I was, I, I was very much in the camp of let's try to do something as well. But um, there are just too many variables that, that make that difficult at this time. So um, I want us to continue to consider ways to give money back to the community, um, ways to continue to uh, provide for the needs of the community, that being one of them. Um, and I know that the administration's got a lot of different things going on with all the uncertainty, but still trying to make sure that we're, as a school district, providing some level of stability in the community in this, these challenging times. So um, I, I, too, am, am now falling on the side of not moving forward in the additional payment. Donna. I know that this was really hard for a lot of our board members to get to that point, uh, as it was for me. I think that it's important to remember that last year we did a $2 million reduction in that tax levy, and that is, affects our taxpayers every year going forward. So I think that that's something that other communities have not done. And I think looking at next year, I will start this process all over again and very possibly will be in a different, much not very possibly. We will be in a very different situation next year at this time. And um, and I would like us to, to know, and, and Mike and, and Dan and our administration to realize that we would like to consider this every year to this depth so that we can make the decision that's best and that finding that balance. But um, just we've done it. We did $2 million last year, and that's something that the taxpayer will um, have as a reduction every year moving forward. So I think that that's important for us to remember as we feel a little bit you know, saddened by the fact that many of us who wanted to do something every year can't, we don't, can't get there this year. Um, I think it's important to remember what we've done. And, um, and I think you gave us a number that we've done that's like over the uh, abatements that we've done is over 10 million. Or do you, do you have yeah, an exact number? Just the one specific bond issue that we're doing tonight right. is over 11 million, plus the other bonds that were paid off which is another nine and a half or 10 million. So it's over 20 million right. uh, in total. And that's not even including the 2 million in the reduction. That's, that's correct. That's an additional 2 million. Addition and that, million. And that right. particular one goes on, like you said, on an annual basis. Right, right. So I think that those, those things speak very highly to us really taking seriously uh, whatever um, we can do to alleviate the burden on the taxpayer. So, um, yeah, I just think we need to celebrate those things right now. I think as well... Um, you know, this is a fuller, fuller picture of what has been somewhat of a cultural change, that we're looking at paring down expenses whenever we can, but then passing that on to taxpayers. And without um, those actions in terms of the abatement last year and the debt service abatement and the payoff of the bonds, that would not be able to be passed on to them. Um, so it's sort of a two-part picture. We've done so much to try to work on um, being um, efficient, uh, but then passing that on. Um, but I think the idea of continuing that is already reflected in our policy. Just looking at um, those one-term, those one-time costs, and looking at assisting taxpayers, that's something that we have provided guidance for that will continue. Um, so whether that's IMRF or whether we, as a board, push for additional legislative tools, as we have, um, to be able to adjust our, our our levy, or even looking at, you know, to be able to give us the capability to do other things like like one-time rebates or things like that that would assist us in keeping our long-term projections secure, but also still assisting our taxpayers when, when it's available. So I, I would commend the board on their actions, both as advocates with our legislature as well as um, as advocates for our taxpayer as a part of our decision-making. 
Okay. That being said, I believe we have a, a board member who has expressed their intention to make a motion, correct? Please, uh, I move to, uh, to approve item 10.03, authorization to reduce 2019 aggregate extension uh, to the amount of $1 million. Okay, I hear a motion, is there a second? So without a second, then the motion be it won't be considered. Okay, so we will go on um, on our agenda item, then without action there, um, to new course proposals, item 10.04. Uh, welcome, Mrs. Willard, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, who has joined us. Uh, at a previous Board of Education meeting, Ms. Willard and Ms. Donatelli presented a recommendation to the Board of Education for new courses uh, at, at our high schools. Uh, no new information to present this evening. Uh, Ms. Willard would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Does anyone have questions for Mrs. Willard? Okay, hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion for item 10.04, new course proposals. I move to approve item 10.04, new course proposals. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Push. Aye. Leong. Aye. Yang Roar. Kuzminski. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Juan Key. Aye. Gerke. Okay, the motion passes. So we will move on to item 10.05, instructional resources. Also at our March 2nd Board of Education meeting, uh, Ms. Willard and Ms. Donatelli presented recommendations to the board for instructional resources for grades K through 5 math, grades K through 9 social studies, grades 9 through 12 CTE, and grades 9 through 12 communication arts. I want to back up. I misspoke for social studies, grades 9 through 12, not grades K through 12. Uh, we have no information to present. Uh, Ms. Willard would be happy to answer any questions that you have, but our recommendation that you approve the resources as selected. Do we have any questions or comments from the board with regard to item 10.05, instructional resource? Okay, comment? Um, this isn't part of instructional resources, but I know that the resources that you and your team have put into today, um, helping get our staff ready to switch to e-learning is very much part of resourcing them, the teachers and the staff. So um, I just want to thank you and your team because I know things have been probably turned upside down a little bit. and. Um, we appreciate all that you've done in the leadership with the staff in that regard. And I know that we don't have additional staff. We have our, 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 some of our staff here, and we have staff that are watching. And so we want to pass on that thank you to all of them because we know this has been a team effort that all of you have put in extra time and extra resources to try to communicate. Um, and to our superintendent, that has been fantastic. Um, I think that um, seeing our leadership as a district and the leadership of our superintendent in um, – you know, advocating the right course of action for our community has been wonderful, and I, it's all the way down to the website. I love going there and getting the alert. Everything is working together to ensure that all of our families and our community are getting the very best from us, so thank you for that. Okay, moving on. If there are no questions for the instructional resources, I will entertain a motion on instructional resources. Move to approve item 10.05, instructional resources. Motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Penn. Leong? Aye. Yang Roar? Fitzgerald? Aye. Gerke? Yes. Wanke? Yes. Push? Aye. Kosminski? Okay, the motion passes. So we will move on to item 10.06, EC through 12, Certified Staffing and District Special Education Projection. At the March 2nd Board of Education meeting, Ms. Voice, Mr. Freund, and Dr. Igo, who I believe are entering the room right now, presented a recommendation to the Board of Education to approve the 2020-2021 staffing projection. Uh, for, the, for the 2021 school year, we are anticipating overall enrollment increase of 1.9%, which leads us to a recommendation of a projected increase of 23 certified staff. Recommend the Board of Education to approve uh, the projections for staffing as presented. Our team is happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, are there questions from the board on the EC through 12 certified staffing and district special ed projection? Okay, if there are no questions, I will entertain a motion. I move to approve item 10.06, the EC through 12 uh, staff, certified staffing and district special ed projection as presented. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Bush? Aye. Leong? Aye. Yang Roar? Fitzgerald? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. 
Gerke. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. So with that, we will go past items 10.07, 10.08, 10.09, and 10.10. As previously mentioned, those are not time sensitive and we can postpone those to a future meeting. So we will go on to item 10.11, restatement of 403B and 457 plan documents. Yeah, there is a, a definitely a, a time constraint here on the, the restatement of the 403B. Um, 457 could be delayed if, if that's the request of the board, uh, but for sure the 403B information has to be updated uh, as a result of uh, new programs for, by the IRS, as a result of a recent audits, audit uh, and, and changes made. Uh, the district does need to restate our 403B plan document with IRS approved plan. Uh, background information is provided for you in board docs. Uh, Mr. Francis is here to answer any questions that you have. Uh, we would recommend that you approve both plans uh, as presented. Um, it'll allow the board to have a conversation. Okay, so to clarify, we, saw, we heard last time that this was something that was raised in our audit and that our auditors and our attorneys had worked together on this restatement as per current law and what is necessary under our audit, audit principles. Okay. Thank you. With that, do we have questions or comments from the board? Donna. So it's my understanding after reading through and trying to understand most of this, this is the first time that we've seen this, or I've seen it, um, that I remember. Um, and the the changes are, that you've gone through with um, legal and our audit are so that we're in compliance, but we're not changing per se um, any of the benefits or the like the program or any like I, I guess it's really it's difficult because we don't have like normally on a policy we have this was the old policy this is the new policy and I can look at the differences and figure out on this we don't have what the old piece looked like so can you just reiterate that for me because that was a recommendation from the IRS um, one way to do it is to take our current plan document and it's pretty lengthy, lengthy. and exactly and make and make uh, bring it up to compliance by making uh, amendments or changes to that uh, they did not recommend that because of this change what the IRS recommended is that almost all 403b vendors have what's known as a pre-approved IRS document that the IRS has already looked at it and said yes this complies with all current statutes and regulations so they recommended strongly that we adopt a pre-approved plan so what we're showing you tonight is a vendor that's taken our current plan and taken the provisions of our current plan and put them within a pre-approved plan that the IRS is in favor of our, 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 our IRS auditor is back uh, tomorrow, even though they were supposed to be on site. We will be giving them a thumb drive uh, to, to continue their audit, but um, uh, the, their, uh, the hope is to, sh to, to tell them that this is our, will be our new plan document again, which will be retroactively stated back to uh, 2010. Under a current law, un that law allows it. Yeah. And there's a, only this time window through March 31st. Are they allowing you to do that? Yeah. Additional questions regarding the 403B or 457 re plan restatement? Charles? So there's no financial impact to that? There is no financial impact. It's literally just wording, making sure that it's. No, it did cost the district, it, I think it cost us $700 to for the vendor to draw up a new plan, and we probably have a few legal fees, but th right. besides that, there are no additional financial impacts. Thank you. If there are no additional, oh, Joe? And, and is this the same with the 457 plan? Yeah, the 457 plan is also the same. The only difference on that is our current 457 plan specifically names one provider, and is the sole provider of any 457, We've had a request from the staff to add additional 457 providers, and we're making it more general. It allows the district to add an additional vendor if so needed. Hey, if we do not have any additional questions, I will entertain a motion for item 10.11, restatement of 403B and 457 plan documents. I move approval of item 10.11, restatement of 403B and 403 457 plan documents. 
as presented. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Leong? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kush? Aye. Gerke? Yes. Yang Roar? Fitzgerald? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So at this, oh, at this point, we will go on to old business. We do not have old business. We will go to new business. We do not have new business. So we will go on to item 13, upcoming events. So we just updated the calendar to reflect the governor's declaration of the mandatory school closure through March 30th. I'll remind our, our board and our community uh, that our, our closure uh, in response to the evolving coronavirus situation uh, cancels all sports and activities for students from March 14th through spring break with a tentative plan of returning on April 6th, uh, 2020. Um, I will note that uh, one of the activities uh, first off of that um, that closure is on Monday, April 6th, our Board of Education meeting. Uh, the governor's executive order today did create some flexibility in the Open Meetings Act, and depending on any sort of required uh, closures or group size limits that may be imposed between now and that date, we may have some flexibility to conduct uh, our meeting uh, virtually or in other ways. So stay tuned for that, and we can make some decisions on that. Uh, but as of now, we are set to resume uh, operations and business on Monday, April 6th, without any further uh, guidance from from, um, from the state. Uh, so the dates that show on the calendar for now uh, still remain, uh, but I expect that there will be some additional limitations that will go beyond as you look at uh, things like district award night and potentially even excellence in education. Uh, stay tuned regarding uh, information on those. We will update the website and our calendar uh, essentially in real time as information becomes available to you. Uh, on the website, again, I would remind board members, uh, as we are modeling today, you see appropriate social distancing as recommended by the CDC. I encourage you to follow the guidelines that are posted on our website and also on the Center for Disease Control's website regarding those things. Uh, as, as the more I understand, uh, the more uh, this is seen as one of the most proactive ways to mitigate the spread of the disease. All right, so I do not have any additional items here on our agenda, so we'll go to item 14, adjournment. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the meeting. A motion is second or heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.